In this video, we're going to take a look at the states of matter. Now, you guys are aware that atoms make up all matter, uh, and that matter exists in three common states here on Earth. Now, there are a, cover, a couple other states of matter, uh, most notably plasma. Plasma is the state of matter that stars are made out of, and this is broken atoms. Essentially, the electrons, which are on the outside of the nucleus already, get stripped away from the nucleus, and instead of having neutral particles bumping around, you have ions or charged particles floating around. We're not too worried about those, at least not yet. What we are worried about are the solids, liquids, and gases. Now, why do we have all of these states of matter, and why can they all exist at the same temperature, and how do we change one into the other? So solids uh, and liquids and gases. Let's start with gases. They're the ones that make the most sense in terms of kinetic theory. All right, here we go. These are atoms of gas and I can tell they're atoms because they're individual particles they're not bonded together it's just individual atoms of gas and I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start playing the simulation you see those little white dashed lines those represent attractive forces between those atoms and every particle every atom has an attractive force for another one but some atoms some types of matter have stronger attractive forces than others this gas doesn't have uh, very many or particularly strong attractive forces which is pretty typical of a gas the particles are moving too fast for the attractive forces to matter uh, and when they hit each other they mostly just bounce off of each other now I can change this to a different gas Okay. This gas is a compound. If you have two or more different elements bonded together, you do have a compound. And if we play this gas through, you can see even though uh, the particles are bigger, they still do the same thing. They bounce around they go all over the place. There are a few attractions between them, but not very many, and they don't last for very long. Now, the attractive forces that actually hold the different atoms together, those are chemical bonds, and those are strong. That's why these particles don't ever separate. Uh, the atoms stay bonded in a compound. Yeah. So gases, particles are in constant random motion, they hit each other, they bounce off of each other, they hit the particles, the particles hit the walls, they bounce off the walls, but they're in constant random motion. Now, liquids are a little bit different and yet a little bit similar. Again, here I have a liquid that is just atoms. It's an element, all these atoms are the same. If I play through here, Okay. You can see that there are pretty strong forces of attraction because the particles always have to stay next to each other. But let me mark an atom near the center. So there's that yellow atom. If we watch it for a little bit, you can see that it's actually not going to stay in the exact same location. These particles can slip past each other. And so it's actually moving around uh, and can do that a lot. And if we pick another atom and we show where it's moving, okay, you can see this yellow line up here is starting to trace an atom out and it's been moving, it started here and it's moving all across. Okay. Now, I'm going to change this to a compound that's a liquid. Now my computer's going to have a little bit harder time rendering this so it's not going to move quite as fast. But you can see this is actually a model of water. I have two hydrogen atoms bonded to an oxygen atom. There are forces of attraction between each one of these things holding them together uh, and they still vibrate and wiggle around but they are sticking to each other. So this is what a compound of water would look like. You'll notice there is no specific order to this. They're not in a pattern. They can slide past each other. Now the last state of matter to take a look at is solids. Okay. Now this is an ionic compound and it's hard to tell, you, tell that it's an ionic compound uh, but you have basically positive and negatively charged atoms that are locked in position. Now I'm going to go ahead and start the simulation and you can see they're not actually still. They do vibrate back and forth but they only vibrate in place. None of these atoms can shift. They don't go anywhere. Okay? So this is an ionic crystal. It is a solid. It is probably a compound. Now if I go to like a metallic solid, here's like a metallic solid. You see all my atoms uh, are the same thing. They're stuck together. Okay, they have metallic bonds between them and again they do the same thing. They just sit there wiggle and vibrate in place. Okay, so solids have very 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 high forces of attraction uh, and they are that locks them together as a solid piece. Okay, And since these particles can't move around solids have a definite shape and a definite volume. Liquids, since the particles are actually held together, they have a definite volume, but no definite shape um, because they can take the shape of their container. And gases, since they actually expand and, and bounce off the walls of their containers, they fill the space they're put in, which means they have no definite volume and no definite shape.